On today's episode of the Cryptoverse. The new and improved DTube version 0.6 has just been launched. So here is an easy to digest video tour of all the new features. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So before we begin, let's make sure we don't make any assumptions here and make sure everyone's on the same page. DTube is a decentralized rival for YouTube that is built on the Steam blockchain and IPFS technology. Now the combination of these two technologies means that Neither your data nor the video files are centrally hosted. This creates like a one of a kind platform that allows people to earn cryptocurrency rewards in a censorship resistant environment that has no ads and is entirely open source. Now, you find out more about this by going to about.d.tube, but for now, let's begin the tour of all the new features in 0.6. Also note, this is simply a video version of the official DTube 0.6 announcement post that was on Steemit. My thinking here was that most people won't be bothered to read this and then DTube just won't get the uh, appropriate appreciation. But as a video, many more people will get the information and DTube will get the recognition that it deserves. So I'll link to this original post in the video description if you want to read every bit of the detail. So let's get into it. DTube is growing by about a video a minute. How bonkers is that, right? A video a minute. That gives, gives you some perspective and destroys any notion that DTube is somehow a theoretical project that's only being used by a handful of people. It's being used for real. One of the major features is that they've just upgraded to more encoding power. So for DTube to be able to be used by the average user, they they should not have to put in much effort. Right? As little effort as possible, the better. And that means the DTube system needs to be able to take any video file when someone clicks upload. They should be able to take any video file you give it and then automatically process it behind the scenes into a format that everyone can view, right? Now, because DTube has grown, grown so much since version 5, they've brought online two more dedicated servers just for encoding the videos. So before it got to the point where there were so many being uploaded that you had to wait in a queue sometime for the video to be have some processing power available. Two new servers online, that shouldn't happen anymore until it grows even more and it reaches the capacity once again. So that's uh, good for me because I upload everything to DTube. Another thing that's happened is a new logo, right? The old logo, which was this one, <laughs> many people couldn't see the D. It's just a play icon and tube. So what they've gone and done is rebranded or upgraded the brand. So you now have this new brand, so it's much easier to see the D. And it much it looks much more like a proper brand than just something someone slapped together, right? Following on from the new logo, this also forms part of the new media kit, um, which apparently was one of the most popular requests. And this allows the DTube brand to appear consistently when people either, you know, feature it in their videos. Um, it also opens up the possibility for you to create your own like t-shirts and mugs and any kind of merchandise that bears the DTube logo. You also got some color codes here if you want to make sure that the branding is consistent with the official branding. That'll help DTube's marketing and awareness going forward, no doubt. Another one is that in this version of DTube, if I just go back to the home page here, when you click on a video, right, the player will scan the IPFS network to find a copy of the file that has the fastest connection to your computer, and then it'll load it from there. So if I just hit this video here, you'll see within a couple of seconds, it just starts loading. I clicked it to stop it there just so it didn't play. But now this, this is kind of a behind the scenes feature, and it not only means the video will start playing faster like it did just now when I first clicked on it, it will also mean it plays smoother throughout without interruptions, right? And the video player itself, it now also features a full custom design with a proper settings menu down here, which at the minute has the ability to increase the playback rate. So if you want to play the video at double speed or whatever, 
That's the only option in the settings menu right now, but this is where all new features can be added in future versions. So that's pretty good. Now the video also now responds to keyboard commands. So like if I press the space bar, I can start and stop the video. If I press the left arrow key, I can skip back five seconds. If I click the right arrow key, I can skip forward by five seconds. And if I press a number on the keyboard, like five, that skips me forward to the five minute point. Pretty cool. Also with regards to scrubbing through the timeline, right? When you hover your mouse over the timeline here, you'll see kind of like a preview a thumbnail of what that frame looks like. So this, if you, if you wanted to skip back and say, oh, where's that particular bit in the video? You can just find it visually by scrolling back to find the scene that you want and then click on it to skip forward to that portion of the video. Pretty cool. Now, thumbnail resizing has also been introduced here. We spoke earlier about how DTube takes in all kinds of different video formats when you upload and then it converts them into a universal format that everyone can view. Well, DTube now also does that for pictures. So in the upload form here, you can upload a snap, which then forms the image that will be previewed on the browsing pages, right? So now it's gonna convert whatever image you upload to the correct size and optimize it to a small picture. So no matter if someone uploads directly from their digital camera in a massive file size, then DTube will resize the image to a small thumbnail so it loads super fast for viewers, but without the person uploading it having to put any effort in. More than that though, DTube now only loads the thumbnails that are in view on your screen. And you can see this in action by say visiting the hot videos page. Here you can see it loads all of the ones that I can see and as I scroll down and bring new videos into view, it just loads those extra ones, right? Now one big drawback of DTube up until now was that unless you were already a super popular creator, you wouldn't get in the hot or the trend in sections and thus you would never be discovered. In this new version of DTube though, when you go open up the side menu with this, this three dot menu, you'll see that there are now dedicated pages for hot, trending and new videos. But there's more. These pages are now infinitely scrollable, making it much more likely for smaller creators to get discovered. So as I go down here, these are less and less popular videos, but you can just keep going and keep going and keep going. So while these were less popular videos, you as a viewer mean you can just keep discovering and discovering and discovering. And if you're a new creator, then it gives you a possibility of being discovered, whereas you wouldn't be before because these trending and uh, hot video pages only went for about 25 videos and then stopped. So that meant only the top 25 would ever get discovered. Now, speaking of discovering stuff, you can now browse DTube by tags. So let's say if you click on a video, you'll see that underneath each of the videos are the tags that are associated with that video. So then once we've watched the video, if we liked it and we wanted some more of the same, then we can click on any one of these, say um, story or life, and then it'll take us to a dedicated page of other videos that have that same tag. Pretty cool. And these are also infinitely scrollable. Granted, there are only a handful of videos here, but trust me, just like before, as, as these get um, padded out, you'll be able to infinitely scroll, say the life tag in this case, then discover as many videos as you like on that topic. Pretty sweet. Now you can also zoom in even further or zero in even more precisely on what you wanna watch um, with this new sorting feature. So we've just clicked on the life tag, but you can now also sort and filter these results based on like when the video was uploaded, last week, last month, or all time. Uh, how popular the video is, say by number of votes or payouts, or by the length of the video, depending on how much time you've got. So you can do all that right there. Pretty sweet if you ask me. And all of this ultimately makes it easier to find videos that you're interested in, which is good for viewers, and it's also good for creators. But the real humdinger for me in terms of discovery of new video content is the related videos that appear down the right-hand side. So if I click on another video, you'll see that it has a column called related videos and then it pulls in related videos that have a similar combination of tags. Pretty cool. This system will get smarter over time as the system gathers more data, but there's no doubt this is gonna be the, the number one or at least one of the most popular ways of discovering new content creators. The question is, what if you find some new content right before you have to go out and you don't have time to watch it and you're afraid that you might not find it again if you come back?
Well, now you'll be able to use one of my personal favorite features, which is the watch later feature. So if we go back to say my homepage here, where it shows my feed and everyone that I'm following, if we wave over any one of these videos, you'll see in the top right hand corner of the thumbnail, we can click on the clock icon and it then turns into a tick. And that means it's then been added to our watch later section in the left hand menu. And here are all the videos I've tagged to watch later. And then once you've watched it, if you want to remove it from this section, you just click the tick and it'll go away from this section once again. Now for creators, there is an improved channel page. So if I click on my name and go through to channel, you'll see this is what my channel page looks like right about now. And there's a couple of things here. There's now a standard cover image with a number of account stats. So you can snoop on what a mop my account looks like. And there's also now, this is for everybody, mind you, there's a night mode. So if you go to the cog icon, which is the settings and click night mode, that flips it into a darker color scheme if you prefer a black background so that the screen isn't shining in your face. This is also a feature on steamit.com, which I'm glad to see has moved over to steamit. And if you've ever had trouble actually logging into uh, DTube, then you can now log in using Steam Connect. So if I just fire up my Firefox browser here, that'll save me logging out on uh, Google Chrome. If I then navigate, navigate to DTube, and then if I click on login in the top right hand corner, you'll see now I have two options. One is the regular login option using your Steam username and then your posting key. But the other one is login with Steam Connect. So when you click on this, that'll allow you to give permission to DTube to post on your behalf when you upload videos and do all kinds of other stuff that you need to be able to do on DTube. So this is if you've had trouble logging directly into DTube and uh, this should this should work around those problems pretty well. Be aware though, this it only lasts for seven days, the session is created, so that just means after seven days, when the Steam Connect session expires, you'll have to log in again, and then you'll get another seven days. Now that's actually a security feature, so it's not broken, don't worry about it. And finally, this is not really a feature of DTube, more of a favor to the creator. If you need help with anything DTube related, then please use the DTube Discord channel because this is now the official hub of the DTube community. And I'll put a link to this in the show notes as well. Now in the next version of DTube, we can look forward to many new features such as uh, notifications is a good one, subtitles, uh, mobile apps, and search engine indexing. So DTube videos can start showing up in the Google search results. Once that starts happening, we'll be looking at a whole nother level of growth as people who have never even heard of Steam before find DTube and then start creating accounts. So if you know of any YouTubers that are having problems with censorship and or demonetization, then send them a link to about.d.tube and then let them have a bit of a read of that site. So that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses, head over to my website, cryptoversity.com, click on courses, and you can take any one of these online courses that I've created for your educational delight. Also notice if you scroll right down to the bottom, my live workshops that are coming up in February are now available to book tickets for. Links are also on the courses page on cryptoversity.com. Also make sure you follow me on Steamit and DTube. My username is at marketingmonk, where I post all of my YouTube content on Steamit and DTube, and I'm a big advocate of DTube, so come and follow me there. Give me your best comments, and then I'll upload, upvote the best comments and give you some Steamit rewards. All right, guys, that is all for today. So I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.